Hi everyone and welcome to my very first video. Being honest, I'm more than excited. Today's topic is the Vidal test, so let's get started. The Vidal test was developed by George Fernand Vidal in 1896 and is a serological method to diagnose enteric fever, also called twofold fever, which is a life-threatening disease. An infection is caused with pathogenic microorganisms like Salmonella tufi or Salmonella peritufi A and B, which is a milder two-foot form. These microorganisms are transmitted to the human body through food and drinks contaminated with fecal matter via the fecal oral route. While in infection, these antigens stimulate the body to produce specific antibodies which are released into the blood and can be detected in the patient's serum after 7 to 10 days. The diagnostic test is based on a visible agglutination reaction either in a test tube or on a slide between antibodies of patient serum and killed bacteria suspension of salmonella carrying specific antigens. Salmonella is a gram-negative bacteria and belongs to the family Enterobacteriaceae with various genera like for example Campylobacter, Enterobacter, Helicobacter, Klebsiella, Shigella, Vibrio and others. Bacteria of this family are routinely found in the GI tract of humans or other animals, but many also have alternative habitats in soil or water. The genus Salmonella can be subdivided into six subspecies by the Kaufman White classification. Salmonella bungori is subspecies 5, and Salmonella enterica includes the subspecies 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. Subspecies 1 can be further broken down into non tufordal Salmonella and tufordal Salmonella. The last category means Salmonella paratufi, which causes paratufoid fever, and Salmonella tufi, which causes tufoid fever. Both have the same symptoms like high fever, sweats, headache, weakness, dry cough, stomach pain, constipation, rashes, and complications like intestinal hemorrhages and or perforation. Tufoid fever is most common in parts of Asia and Africa, which have the highest rates, where the disease most often occurs in children and young adults from 2 to 19 years. But it's not that common in the United States, Canada, Western Europe, Australia or Japan. Cases in these countries most often get the disease by traveling. Salmonella has three kinds of antigens which I'm drawing here. The first antigen is the flagellum, plural flagella also called H antigen, AH or BH antigen, depending on Salmonella tufi and Salmonella paratufi, A or B. Flagella are hair-like structures that act primarily as an organelle of locomotion, are helical-shaped structures which are composed of subunits of a protein called flagellin, emerge from cell wall and cell membrane, are heat and alcohol labile, and strongly immunogenic. The second antigen is the K or VI antigen, which is located within the polysaccharide capsule and poorly immunogenic. The third antigen is the O antigen or cell wall antigen, which is found on the polysaccharide portion of the lipopolysaccharides. These are less immunogenic and are commonly used to serologically type many of the enteric gram negative rods. So the Vidal test starts with a rapid qualitative slide test. Let's see how it looks like. The rapid qualitative slide test shows us to which antigen our body already produced some antibodies. That's why we say qualitative, it's just a statement about the antibody presence. We use a test card or glass slide which has six circles labeled with O, H, AH and BH for the various antigens and as a kind of reference point to compare which circle shows agglutination and which doesn't, we use the negative and positive control, NC and PC. First we place a drop of undiluted test serum in the first four circles. That means to the O, H, AH and BH circle. After that we place a drop of negative control and positive control serum in the corresponding circle. As a last step we add the antigens. That means we add the O antigen to the first circle the H antigen to the second circle, the AH antigen to the third circle, the BH antigen to the fourth circle, and the controls which can be either the O or the H antigen.
This picture is an overview of what I just said. The first circle contains the test serum and the O antigen, the second circle the test serum and the H antigen, the third circle the test serum and the AH antigen, the fourth circle the test serum and the BH antigen, and the controls contain the negative and positive control serum plus either the O or the H antigen. After we added everything, we rocked the slide for one minute. And here we can see the agglutination for the O and H antigen if you compare it to the positive control. So the test is positive for those two antigens. Normally these antigens are included in the test kit together with the control serum as glass pipette dropper bottles, but to make it more clear, I drew the bacteria again and took the antigens from them. So after the rapid qualitative slide test, you can either do a quantitative tube test or a quantitative slide test. Let's take a look at the quantitative tube test first. The quantitative tube test is watching out for the antibody titer. That's why we call it quantitative. It means the determination of the antibody amount against a particular antigen. As you see, we have eight test tubes and fill them with isotonic saline. The first tube gets 1.9 milliliter and the remaining 1 milliliter. In the second step, we add 0.1 milliliter test serum to the first tube and mix it. In the next step, we transfer 1 ml diluted serum from tube 1 to tube number 2 and mix it. This process is continued until tube number 7, where we dump 1 ml of the diluted serum. By that, we get different concentrations from tube number 1 to 7, that is 1 to 20 to 1 to 1280. Tube number 8 is just our control and has no test serum inside. In the end, we add one drop of antigen to all eight test tubes, but only those antigens which were tested as positive in the rapid qualitative slide test in the beginning. Now the tubes are filled up with everything we need. This is how the tubes schematically look like after we're done. We have the same amount of antigens and saline in each tube, but the tested serum is halved in its concentration from tube to tube. As I already mentioned, we do that test only for those antigens which were positive in the beginning, so in this case only for H and O antigen. The quantitative tube test can be done in a test tube rack where each row stands for another antigen. Here you can see how the agglutination process could look like. So the antibody titer for example for the O antigen in this case is 160 because the tube with a 1 to 160 concentration is the most dilute concentration that produces a positive reaction. I will tell you later what it means, just keep it in mind. Instead of a quantitative tube test, you can also do a quantitative slide test. It's almost the same, just on a slide. So we start with the undiluted serum with different volumes from 0.08 ml to 0.005 ml, which gives us the different concentrations and add them to the corresponding circles from 1 to 5. After that, we add again a drop of appropriate antigen suspension, for example O antigen, to each circle which showed agglutination in the rapid slide test. We mix the contents of each circle and rock the slide slowly for one minute. The title of the antibody is the highest dilution of serum up to which there is a clear agglutination, so again 160. In the beginning our rapid slide test was also positive for the H antigen, so we have to clean the test slide to do the same thing with the H antigen for the title determination. Out of simplicity we skip that part here. But what does the antibody titer mean? You can say that titers under 50 are negative results, a titer of 100 is a kind of threshold titer, and everything above a titer of 200 can be seen as a positive result. Elevated levels of both O and H agglutinin titer are more helpful than either of them alone in making presumptive diagnosis. Due to that, it can be said that the tide of 80 for the O antigen plus the tide of 160 for the H antigen is significant. But the Vidal test depends on the baseline titer, which is prevalent amongst healthy individuals in a particular geographical area and it can vary. So it's better to observe a fourfold increase in the titer between two samples taken at least 10 to 14 days apart. In general, antibodies appear after 7 to 10 days. 
The H antibodies are positive in acute but also in past infections, increase after the 10th day of disease, reach the maximum of the 3 weeks, which is about 1 to 1600 or more, decrease after convalescence within weeks, can persist for years and are more reliable than O agglutinin. The O antibodies are positive in acute salmonellosis. They increase after the second week of disease, have a maximum of about 1 to 400 and decrease after convalescence within weeks. The value of the tests in diagnosing enteric fever in endemic areas remains controversial. The Vidal test is in terms of sensitivity and specificity insufficient and only in close connection with a clinically or epidemiologically proven twofold disease together with the knowledge of the baseline O and H agglutinin titer in the local population meaningful. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support me, please like and subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Till the next time.